Let's call back to order. Uh, the time is 9-10. Panel members today are Ms. Pearl Wise, Mr. Pete Freeman. My name is Tony Marabella. I'll be acting as chair. Our remote location is Elaine Hunt Correctional Center with the staff at Hunt. Please introduce themselves. Good morning. Warren Donnie Bartle. Christy LeBlanc, classification. Joe Butchers, assistant warden. Thank you. Our first case is Mr. Um, Wilson Miles. Mr. Miles, would you please introduce yourself and give us your DOC number? Wilson, Wilson Miles, Jr. 725, DOC number 725 Thank you, Mr. Miles. Let me explain our process to you. First, I'm going to read some information into the record. And then the board is going to conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow those persons who wish to have input to speak. Currently uh, here in, at headquarters today, uh, speaking on your behalf is your brother, uh, Robert Miles. Uh, your sister is here. Uh, she will not be speaking, but she's here to support you. Your attorney, Ms. Jane Hogan, is on Zoom, and she will speak at the appropriate time. Ms. Hogan, would you like to make an appearance for the record, please? Good morning, Mr. Marabella. Jane Hogan from the Louisiana Parole Project here on behalf of Wilson Miles, and I will speak at the end with the committee's approval. Thank you. Uh, at the end, uh, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes, uh, Mr. Miles, and then we'll hear from uh, Ms. Hogan and the board will vote. You understand our process? Sure. This is the matter of Wilson Miles Jr., docket number 725072568, date of birth May 30th of 1947. He's a second class offender. He has a parole eligibility date of June 17th of 2022. He does not earn good time. He's serving a life sentence for the charge of murder. Is that basically accurate, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Miles? Yes, sir. Your case has been assigned to Ms. Pearl Wise. She will begin our interview process. Would you please answer any questions she might have? No, sir, I have any regret. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How old are you, Mr. Miles? Well, we, we get we get some straight for it. Uh, I'm 77. You're 77. Oh, you had a birthday May 30th. Right. All right, you're 77. Yes, ma'am. Good, good. How you feeling today? I feel in between. I'm going in and out between good and bad. Okay, you you feel in between good and bad. Sometimes my head pressure on that will pass on. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Right. <clears throat> I, uh, <clears throat> so you this uh this hearing came about because of a new law. I know that was exciting news when you heard that. Huh? The new law. Yeah, the new law, because you had a life sentence, uh came about because of a new law. That's why you had a hearing. Well, I don't really be you keep up with the law and stuff like that. One of my problems right there, not keeping up with this and that there, but you know, I pick up the information from people that I be talking with and all things of the law and stuff like that. Be myself. Yes. Really I, I see. Okay, I got you. Let, let's talk about your crime. Uh, you were you were 22 when you committed this crime, right? This one right here? Yes, 24. sir. Why are you doing time for that? You was 22 or so, night 20. You remember? 24. He was 24? Okay, all right. Did you know uh, Mrs. Mary Zeno? I didn't personally know her, but like that, and when I come in contact with Elsa, we had to hear each other. Say what now? Okay. I'm, I'm so sorry, sir. I, I, didn't pick, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, we didn't know each other personally, nothing like that, then, other than the contact I came with about a point and asked about some money we got into it. That's the only time I really knew it that night in that one particular so why, why were you asking Miss Mary about some money? Okay, I guess that guy was paying attention. He's going to be young and everything. I had no job. I've been out about a week, maybe. And, uh, you know, I had no money. I was walking down the street one night and had to see all about the bus stop by myself and made the approach. But I was really thinking negative stuff like that. There's nothing positive in my head being young and stuff like that. Yes, sir. Yes. So what had you just got out of jail for? What was that crime? Burglary. Sample burglary. Two years of sample burglary. Okay. 
So why should I vote to let you out of jail today? Mm -hmm. Why yeah. should I vote to let you out of jail today? Well, you know, I'm a chance push from then now and stuff like that. I've been showing remote for victim people and stuff like that too. And, and for the victim too, I came back I'm back. I'm sorry about that day. But oh, uh, you know, I did it the two years. So based upon that day, I feel like, you know. You said basically, I'm I'm so sorry, sir. I, I just cannot seem to hear what you're saying. Now, uh, start over again answering the question why do you think I should vote to let you out? Okay. The real why I feel like, or I think you should let me out. I don't get 52 years. You've been what? Yeah, no, I'm so sorry. I can't catch what you said. You did what for two years? Two years locked up, incorporated. Uh, How, the How many years you been locked up? Two, two, six, seven, one. I'm not okay. careful. I be wrong, but all. Uh, say 71. Yes, sir. And, uh, I feel this on that day the change I don't be since that time and what the type of point that was then. Yeah. So uh, what kind of programs have you had since 1971 that you've taken? Well, when I, when I came up to the penitentiary, where the penitentiary was, they had no program or like you couldn't get school stuff like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Since then, everything else in my incorporation been in and out of sale. Uh, can you read and write? Well, I can now. At forty, I could, but yes, man, I can read and read. Good. It's pivoting for the war. See, where I started out at David Wade in school, when they called me to come down here, or uh, down here at lunch for hypnotizing C, and I just stopped right there. That way, everything died out right there. Okay. Okay. Uh. It looked like you've had one hundred and twelve write-ups uh, since nineteen seventy-one, and you uh. And your last one was in 2018. That was your last write-up. Right. Well, when I get all the way up then, with the penitentiary work, then, you know, you, you had to get them. But uh, I changed a lot since then. So, now, now, so if you were successful today, uh, what's your plan? If you, if you get let out today, what's your plan? Where would you live? Well, I have... Uh, Two sisters left and a bunch of nieces and nephews. I wanted to go ahead and visit Bounce and nothing like that there. So I would have to go if they would let me go and get to find me somewhere to stay and stuff like that and work my way back on the street. Now, if I would, if I happen to get on the street or something like that there, I had to lay back and just go right off and nothing just like that. They're not old you were or not. I had to lay back and alive. What's yes, going sir. on? Like that. That's true. And that's so, that's so, that's very smart of you to be thinking like that. Very smart of you. Um, well, thank you for talking to me. You do have a low tiger. I just want to enter that on the record. Um, Warren, what can you tell us about Mr. Miles? Oh, he's been incarcerated in a long time, his wife. Uh, unfortunately, you know, he really didn't, uh, he wasn't in a position where he can, you know, get a lot of programs. Uh, he, uh, that last ride that we had in 2018 was actually a, just a simple fight. Uh, before that, he went, you know, it was 2010 before he had had a ride up before that. Uh, he's been doing okay. I wish he would have had a little more uh, programming, uh, but he's uh, he's been doing all right. All right. All right. Thank you, Warren. That's, that's, uh, that's all I have. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Raven. Uh, Mr. Miles, uh, I see you have some medical problems. What what are your medical problems? Excuse me. I got high blood. I got a bad heart. Stuff like that. Give me the uh, kitten pill, fluid pill, stuff like that. Yeah. And okay. I've been getting all these like, this spell falling out off and on, stuff like that. Okay, thank you. Now we'll hear from uh, your supporters. Let's hear from uh, your brother, Mr. Robert Miles. All right. Mr. Miles, if you'll walk up to that podium and just uh, introduce yourself and tell us what you'd like us to know. Yeah, uh, do you know Mark, two kids, six million kids? I never know my brother. <laughs> I would like to have love, love, and spend time with, but I hope everything I can do to help you. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Miles. It's obvious very difficult for you to be here and we appreciate the courage it took to come here and talk to us. Mr. Maribella, I believe that Carrie Myers from the Parole Project is in the waiting room. Um, sorry, okay. I interrupt. Here, Miles. Mr. Miles, Miles on the line. Okay. Good. Good morning, Mr. Myers. Uh, good morning. Sorry. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Myers, uh, yeah. what can you tell us about uh, Mr. Myers? Um, so we are prepared to, to offer Mr. Miles uh, the transition services. Obviously, Parole Project is committed to 10-6 to lifers. Uh, we, we know that he has a, a, a transition uh, challenge and uh, we, we are prepared to assist him with that. We're also prepared to make sure he's connected to any medical services that he needs. We know he's gonna have some medical needs uh, once he gets released. And we're also prepared to help him find long-term housing uh, that would be suitable and, and uh, just for him. So we just wanna let this board know that, that, that Mr. Miles is, is uh, here because of, obviously this board knows here because of Act 544. And we are absolutely in support of, of Mr. Miles' transition. Thank you, Mr. Miles. We appreciate your comments. Uh, Mr. Mr. Miles, is there something uh, you wish to say to us before we turn it over to Ms. Hogan? I would like to say that uh, I'm, you know, I want to thank everyone for giving the opportunity to come before the board and have a chance to say something for myself. And thank the support the ward and all of them, the board staff, stuff like that. And I also would like to say that uh, I'm sorry for the charge and, and the victim family and stuff like that, that too. So, you know, I'm more listening than line right there. You know, and you know, I think about them all, all the time, the victim family, I think about all, all the time. For the 30, 40 years. But anyway, I'd like to thank everyone, each and every one, for the opportunity to give me to come before the board and speak for myself too at the same time. Thank you very much. Sir. We'll now hear from Ms. Hogan. Ms. Hogan? Thank you, Mr. Marabella. Mr. Miles is here because of Act 544, and I know that his case is a little bit different than cases that this board sees where men have tons of programs and, and things like that. And Mr. Miles is just very different for several reasons, but, um, you know, according to my notes, this crime occurred in 1971, October of 1971, and the same month, Mr. Miles pled guilty, waiving all of his rights to a trial and to everything else, because 
at the time he the law was that after 10 and a half years he would be released um and so act 544 exists because uh there are several men in mr miles's position who pled guilty with the understanding that after 10 and a half years they would be released and not be released because they completed programs or because of of one thing or another frankly at the time of there were no programs to complete um and so here we are 52 years later the promise uh, that was made to Mr. Miles obviously was broken and Act 544 is an attempt to make good on that promise. Mr. Miles is out of Orleans Parish. Um, I know personally from working with the Orleans Parish District Attorney's Office that there has been a commitment of that office to resentence men. I know that there is no opposition to Mr. Miles being granted parole today. I've spoken about Mr. Miles's case with um, the Civil Rights Division of the Orleans Parish District Attorney's Office. They're aware of his case. And even though Mr. Miles doesn't have a ton of programs, he did make efforts. When he was at David Wade Correctional Center in 2014, he enrolled in school. He took uh, literacy classes and learned how to read. And then he was transferred to Elaine Hunt because he had hepatitis C and he had to get treatment for that. Um, he's also had several heart attacks. And um, as mentioned by the warden, his last write-up was in 2018 for a simple fight. But before that, it had been um, 2010, before that, 2003. So in the last 22 years, Mr. Miles has had only three disciplinary write-ups. He's 76 years old. He has a low risk of recidivism. The parole project is committed to um, providing support for him and considering also that he still has family that have shown up today that have advocated for him, we would ask this board to grant Mr. Miles's parole with any conditions that it deems appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. So appreciate your comments. Is the panel ready to vote? Yes. yes. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Miles, it, it was a pleasure meeting you uh, uh, this morning. Uh, my vote is to grant uh, for multiple reasons, uh, but to the Louisiana Parole Project, uh, uh, because you know, because of your age, the time served, and and the uh, and the transition plan, you have an absolutely wonderful transition plan. I just encourage you to cooperate with the parole project. They are experts; they know what they're doing. Best wishes to to you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Miles. Mr. Freeman. Uh, uh, Mr. Miles, I agree with uh, Ms. Wise, and I also vote to grant. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Miles, uh, when we first uh, talked with you, you said you were 77 years old. You were born in 1947. You're only 76 because I'm a year older than you. And when we get our age, every year counts. So uh, you're only 76 years old. Uh, my vote, likewise, is to grant uh, to the Louisiana Parole Project. Uh, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. So for those of you who might not be familiar, I will give you a little bit of a share. So uh, we've seen a handful of cases. What they were doing back then was Louisiana has a reputation for having, for being corrupt. And they have their reputation for good reason. <laughs> They had this weird law. They had this really weird law that uh, they would have people plea to what was called 10 years, six months, uh, and you would get out. And a lot of people would plea to the, to the, 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 the 10, and that's why they're called 10 six lifers because so a lot of people would plead to it. This is Louisiana. This is in a, uh, you know, in the, in the fifties and sixties and, and, and early seventies. And I mean, frankly, the, the, you had no chance and it was really easy to just do 10, six, uh, to take a 10, six deal. We had seen someone who was, in my opinion, 100% innocent. He showed up 40 something, 50 years later at his parole hearing and still said, I am innocent. And uh, maybe I'll put the link to it up here. I believe him entirely. Um, but he took the 10 6 deal because he knew he, there was no way he would win in the Louisiana court system. And what they did is they just basically said, you know what? We changed our mind. And the 
Um, they said, anyone who we signed this deal with, too bad. You're just getting a life sentence. No joke. <laughs> no joke. Um, so everyone who signed a contract with the state to do 10 years and six months now had to serve life without parole. And this was the, this man. I, I don't know what he did because I, maybe I wasn't paying attention. The, maybe it was hard to hear him. Maybe it was Miss Wise's uh, interview style. But I, I could, did he attack someone? Did he red rum someone? Did he do something else? I, I, I'm not quite sure. Um, but you know, this is why the parole project uh, exists. And this is something that I could agree on the parole project being here. It's good to see them there, you know, because someone like this who gets out, what are they going to do? They're going to fail. Like, so you need the parole project to help um, really, which is just an end of life thing. Now, how Act 5-4 got passed is you can argue that uh you know it's an act that reads follows so parole eligibility juvenile offenders and the, you know there's all, whoever qualifies under this act but it passed and if you want to be pessimistic or maybe if you want to be realist which is kind of or however you want to call it i mean you might argue it is a good act but also i believe you follow the money uh louisiana uh, I think most, if not all, Louisiana prisons are um, privately owned or actually publicly traded on the stock market. And inmates, as they age, become very expensive. So what do you do when all of a sudden all of your uh, each inmate, which is a profit churning machine, becomes um, a negative on your balance sheet? Well, you would probably lobby to pass acts to get these inmates off of your balance sheet and put them into someone else's balance sheet, or taxpayer's money balance sheet, if you want to call it that. Um, and uh, the Louisiana Pro Project is a non-for-profit, but Curry Myers was an inmate once at Angola for many, many years. Um, but uh, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. I, I am very happy to see him get out and to uh, it is simply if you sign a contract with the state to do 10 years and six months, you should not be doing life. That's just principle. It's just the way it's just the way a contract works. So it is insane. Um, but I'm just sharing all the information on this. And hey, that's why we do this, right? Let's expose the realities of our system because no one else will do it. And if you do like it, like and subscribe. Help the channel grow. I do appreciate you. With that, I'll let you go.